What's going on, guys? It's Jimmy here. Welcome to our daily show where we discuss everything going on here in our country that you need to know about here on a daily basis. We have some major news here on several different fronts here uh, that is going on here. Uh, the U.S. is really kind of battling a lot of different types of potential threats here on a couple different fronts. First of all, last night uh, we have actually got one of our former um, – well, I'll let the president tell you here. Here's what uh, happened here last night. Check this out. In my direction, the United States successfully concluded an airstrike in Kabul, Afghanistan, that killed the emir of al-Qaeda, Iman al-Zawiri. You know, Zawiri was uh, bin Laden's leader. He was with him all the, the whole time. He was his number two man, his deputy at the time the terrorist attack 9-11. He was deeply involved in the planning of 9-11, one of the most responsible for the attacks that murdered 2,977 people on American soil. For decades, he was the mastermind behind attacks against Americans, including the bombing of the USS Cole in 2000, which killed 17 American sailors and wounded dozens more. He played a key role, a key role in the bombing of U.S. embassies in Kenya and Tanzania, killing 224 and wounding over 4,500 others. He carved a trail of murder and violence against American citizens, American service members, <clears throat> American diplomats, and American interests. And since the United States delivered justice to bin Laden 11 years ago, Zawahiri has been a leader of al-Qaeda, the leader. From hiding, he coordinated al-Qaeda's branches and all around the world, including setting priorities for providing operational guidance that call for and inspired attacks against U.S. targets. He made videos, including the recent weeks, calling for his followers to attack the United States and our allies. Now, justice has been delivered, and this terrorist leader is no more. People around the world no longer need to fear the vicious and determined killer. The United States continues to demonstrate our resolve and our capacity to defend the American people against those who seek to do us harm. You know, we, we, uh, we, we make it clear again tonight that no matter how long it takes, no matter where you hide, if you are a threat to our people, the United States will find you and take you out. After relentlessly seeking Zawahiri for years under Presidents Bush, Obama, and Trump, our intelligence community located Zawahiri earlier this year. He had moved to downtown Kabul to reunite with members of his immediate family. After carefully considering the clear and convincing evidence of his location, I authorized a precision strike that would remove him from the battlefield once and for all. This mission was carefully planned rigorously minimize the risk of harm to other civilians. And one week ago, after being advised that the conditions were optimal, I gave the final approval to go get him. And the mission was a success. None of his family members were hurt, and there were no civilian casualties. I'm sharing this news with the American people now, after confirming the mission's total success through the painstaking work of our counterterrorism community and key allies and partners. My administration has kept congressional leaders informed as well. When I ended our military mission in Afghanistan almost a year ago, I made the decision that after 20 years of war, the United States no longer needed thousands of boots on the ground in Afghanistan to protect America from terrorists who seek to do us harm. And I made a promise to the American people that we continue to conduct effective counterterrorism operations in Afghanistan and beyond. We've done just that. In February, our forces conducted a daring mission in Syria that eliminated the emir of ISIS. Last month, we took out another key ISIS leader. Now we have eliminated the emir of al-Qaeda. He will never again, never again, allow Afghanistan to become a terrorist safe haven because he is gone, and we're going to make sure that nothing else happens. Yeah, so... Even though we don't have people and uh, military in Afghanistan, 
We still take out the number two Al Qaeda leader in Afghanistan. Wow. Yeah, so we're not putting Americans' lives at risk, and yet we still take out the Al Qaeda leader there. Pretty impressive. Pretty impressive. So uh, we got a lot of criticism when we pulled out of Afghanistan, but um, last night we we get the job done there, and still putting um, putting together the pieces here from from nine eleven here. Interesting. Let me know your thoughts here. And yet, as as one threat, kind of one door closes, another one opens, and yet another one opens. Um, this is kind of the state of the world today. Uh, just in breaking news here within the last 24 hours, two different stories here um, appearing. One, we'll get to Nancy Pelosi here in Taiwan here in a second. First... Last night as well, Iran declares it can use nuclear missiles to turn New York into hellish ruins. Iran boasts about its nuclear program and says, when will Iran's sleeping warheads awaken? I know, it's just, if it's not one thing, it's another, right? This is kind of the state of foreign affairs right now. Yeah, we're getting word now that the Iranian regime's Islamic Revolutionary Guard Corps on Saturday said that it can develop a nuclear weapon within a rapid-fire amount of time, this is what they're saying, and obliterate New York with ballistic missiles. The London-based Iran International News Organization reported that the Bashimi Media Telegram channel aired a short video titled when will Iran's sleeping warheads awaken? The video said that the Islamic Republic of Iran is capable of building nuclear bombs in a compressed period of time if the U.S. or the Zionist regime make any stupid mistakes. The video said the nuclear facilities of Fordo have been built deep under the mountains of Iran and are protected against trench busting bombs, and even nuclear explosion. All infrastructures required for nuclear breakout have been prepared in it. According to the Iran International Report, the video said Iran has advanced its uranium enrichment process to develop nuclear weapons device in the underground facilities of Fordo, near the holy city of Qom. Some other key takeaways from the video include Iran's dangerous proximity to developing nuclear weapons, joining the club of nuclear powers. Here is what the Israeli defense minister had to say. Uh, take a listen. Yes, uh, this, is a, this is a serious issue. And, and, and speaking world widely, I would say we all see Iran's malign activities in the region and elsewhere. Now, they are doing all that without having the nuclear canopy deterrence to support it. Now, just try to figure out the reality. How would they act without using nuclear, but just using the nuclear canopy in all those uh, activities that we are seeing around the region? Secondly, and, and this is why we should not let it get to ir, ir, uh, nuclear capabilities. And, you know, speaking of uh, Biden's visit, you know, he came and he out loud said that the United States will not allow Iran to become nuclear. And I think that this is a very important strategic statement by him and by any leader of the United States lately. So I think this is very important. But let us be strategically candid, I would say. I'm not aware of any other country in the world that there is another country, in our case, Iran, that is calling for its destruction and building the means to do so. And I think that for international reasons, the world should stop it. I think that for regional reasons, the region should be united around it. And I think that we, 
is Israeli government, as leaders of the Jewish country, have an historical responsibility to make sure that that doesn't happen. Meanwhile, U.S. House Speaker uh, has landed in Taiwan. Yeah, you can see here Nancy Pelosi lands in Taiwan amid threats of Chinese retaliation. Yeah. So uh, if it's not one thing, it's another. Here's what uh, China had to say. Check this out. And dramatic warnings from China today after sources confirmed House Speaker Nancy Pelosi will visit Taiwan during her trip to Asia. The stop was not listed on Pelosi's public itinerary when she landed in Singapore this morning. But if she makes the trip, she would be the first House Speaker in 25 years to visit Taiwan. And this morning, Chinese officials warned against the, quote, egregious political impact of a trip to the self-governing island. And hours later, the Chinese military released this video, claiming it will, quote, bury incoming enemies while showcasing weapons and fighting tactics. We should note the Chinese military did not mention Taiwan in that video, but U.S. officials say the Pentagon is working around the clock, monitoring any Chinese movements in the region and securing a plan to keep Pelosi and the congressional delegation she's leading safe. Here's what the White House has to say about Nancy Pelosi's trip to Taiwan. Check this out. So we won't be commenting or speculating about um, the, the stops on her trip. We have been clear from the very beginning that she will make her own decisions and that Congress is an independent branch of government. Our Constitution embeds a separation of powers. This is well known to the PRC, given our more than four decades of diplomatic relations. The Speaker has the right to visit Taiwan, and the Speaker of the House has visited Taiwan before, without incident as have many members of Congress, including this year. Now, the world has seen the United States government be very clear that nothing has changed, nothing has changed about our one China policy, which is, of course, guided by the Taiwan Relations Act, the three joint U.S. PRC communiques, and the six assurances. We have said, and we have repeatedly said, that we oppose any unilateral changes to the status quo from either side. We have said that we do not support Taiwan independence, and we have said that we expect cross-strait differences to be resolved by peaceful means. We have communicated this directly to the PRC at the highest levels, including as recently as last week in the phone call between President Biden and President Xi. The National Security Advisor, the Secretaries of State and Defense, the Chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff have also made this very clear to Beijing in a half a dozen recent high-level conversations. Put simply, there is no reason for Beijing to turn a potential visit consistent with long-standing U.S. policy into some sort of crisis or conflict, or use it as a pretext to increase aggressive military activity in or around the Taiwan Strait. So there you have it. And we didn't even mention in this video the Russia-Ukraine war. So yeah, it's just, uh, there's a lot going on here. And this is basically all foreign policy. This, it seems like there's, there's just so much, so much threats going on here right now. Um, and this is after we've pulled out of Afghanistan. Uh, remember that there was, as you can see in this article from Forbes here, back from August of 2021. The war in Afghanistan cost America $300 million per day for 20 years with big bills yet to come. So we no longer there per se. We did do a drone strike there, but uh, there's no longer American lives being lost there. And um, so you got to think that $300 million per day is being quote, saved in Afghanistan kind of makes you wonder, where's the savings at? That's a billion dollars about every three to four days. Yeah. Interesting, right? So we're not even in Afghanistan per se. I mean, we have a drone there occasionally, but uh, 
the threat to America is still ever there, ever more. Let me know your thoughts here in the comments. I will keep you up to date here with everything going on here in our country on a daily basis. So if you haven't subscribed to our YouTube channel yet, make sure to click the subscribe button down below. It's completely free to do so and click the bell icon so you get notifications when we go live with new videos, which is every day at 10 a.m., 3 p.m. and 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. I will keep you up to date here with everything that you need to know about. You can click here to see why our veterans are disgusted with Congress right now, a major bill. And here is another major bill that is set to be passed here soon and checks that are going out here right actually starting this week. So click on one of those videos next. Thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you in the next video.